Hello, beautiful people. Samson Williams here. Uh, this is the third video in the series about how at the top of the corporate ladder is entrepreneurship. You can climb up the corporate ladder, but once you get to the top, you either have your own parachute or you get kicked the fuck off. So it's not the getting kicked off the ladder that kills you or kills your career, your ambition, your mojo. It's that sudden deceleration to reality that, hey, you're now going to be an, an entrepreneur. So in our previous video, I gave you four options for what happens for how you pivot from the corporate ladder. So I was digging through a, a box and I found this. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see, can you see that? Uh, anyway, there are a bunch of business cards. Because once upon a time, I used to have a corporate job. Let's see if you can see this. Can you see that? Uh, let's focus, there we go. Once upon a time, I used to work at Fannie Mae. So I was a baby chief of staff in the executive office for operations and technology. And I realized when I left, no one gave a fuck who I was. Because while I was at Fannie Mae, I could get almost anything done with this card or in the industry in general, because I know a lot of people. But when you get kicked off the corporate ladder, who the fuck are you? Because you might have to start over. So why are you watching this video? What's in it for you? Let's talk about the corporate ladder and starting over. Because we've already gone through this part. This is the corporate ladder. You want it to pivot. This is where we're going to talk about the pivot and starting over specifically. And so with no further ado, let's talk about starting over. Um, this is more of an emotional journey than anything else because you're really not starting over. Uh, and just to recap, uh, at the top of the corporate ladder is entrepreneurship. Congratulations. You're about to be your own boss and you don't know how scary that can be, but equally awesome. So Number one, when you're pivot, start over. You get out of your current career and you start over. Otherwise, you just make a horizontal or a lateral, you make a lateral move to another group or agency or department or business where you're actually still stuck on the same route. You might not wanna do that, you know why. But you could go to a completely new field and start over. <sighs> Take a breath. That you might need to have a drink because this is an emotional moment because I've started over myself. And so I'm going to give you some of the lessons learned about starting over. You're not actually starting over. Uh, you're starting anew. Because you're not starting over at zero. You actually know what you're about. You know what your strengths are. You know how you're a titan of the apocalypse. You know who you are. You're not starting over, as in from scratch, you're starting anew. Congratulations, you're the new kid on the block. What does that mean? Well, when you're starting over, the first thing you got to do is who the fuck are you? Because what happens when you start over, when you start anew, no one knows who you are, particularly if you're in a new industry or a new vertical. No, one's no, no one knows you. They literally don't know who you are. You're a stranger. They haven't heard of you. Uh, you don't have something that's super important in any, in any industry, what is called street cred. Because what is your street cred? If you're in a new industry, your street cred is probably at zero. Because your street cred is at zero because no one knows your reputation. These are all soft skills, soft qualities, not hard qualities. And the reason this is so important, because when you're starting a new, you're going to start building relationships from scratch, from zero. It's day one. It's the first day at school. And all of a sudden, you're a second grader. You're eight years old, back in second grade. And you're like, oh, my God, I'm starting a new. And I want you to focus on these things, because these things, this is going to make or break you. And it's also key to how you show up not new, but show up uh, with 100% of yourself. And here's some things that you can do right now to start improving on that process because you're not starting over, you're starting anew. And we wanna tackle the who the fuck are you hurdle because you're street creating your reputation. So the first thing you really need to start doing, and I didn't realize this at the time when I left Fannie Mae, I wasn't engaging current, engaging my network. So the first thing you wanna do is you want to engage your network. And when I say engage your network, it could be as simple as go to lunch, go to brunch, go to drinks, start talking and building your network. 
build your network before you leave. You know you're at the top of the corporate ladder. You're going to get kicked off. You're either getting a golden parachute or you're just getting kicked off. Welcome to the gravity of life. Got to start engaging your network because that's where all the opportunities are going to come from. So when I left Fannie Mae, I was doing a horrible, shitty job of engaging my network. And I literally had to start over. Because when you go to start over, you need this thing called support. Right now, you're an executive. You have a lot of support. You have admin support. You have project management support. You can access technical experts from around the world. They give you all the support in the world. But when you leave and you start anew because no one knows who the fuck you are, you don't have any street cred because you don't have a reputation in that new industry or vertical, you're screwed. You don't have the support system you currently have. So one of the exercises I want you to do is sit, grab a piece of paper and a pen and write down who supports you. And it's all of the things that make your job possible that don't that aren't you. So again, it's your admins, it's your EAs, it's your project managers, it's your technical experts. It's all the people who you can call, send an email to, engage with them on a drop of a dime, and they provide you that technical insights and expertise that you need because you're still going to need the same thing when you leave this corporate ladder, when you get out of this oppressive job that you're currently in. If you haven't engaged your network now, so that people build up the original virtual currencies. Everyone's always excited about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. I tell them, screw that. You need favors. Favors are the original currency. You don't have favors unless you're engaging your network and giving them support and getting support from them. I'm gonna write this down. We're gonna switch uh, pins right quick. Um, three, favors. Equals social currency. So uh, let's make that you a little bit better. So the question to you is, what's your social currency right now? How many favors are out on the street? How many favors do you have out on the street that you could call in and say, hey, when you leave, you could cash them in? That's what you want to know. So the fourth thing that you can improve on even now, and I think number four is actually really important, is working on your being known as an SME, a subject matter expert. So I'm a subject matter expert now. I've written some books on crowdfunding, stop fucking, uh, stop sucking up to VCs, written a book on the space economy. So now I'm a space economist. And so all those things are things I didn't know I needed to be when I left my comfortable uh, nine to five. What are you known as? Not known as in that safe vertical that is your current job, your current occupation, your current industry, how will people know that you're a subject matter expert outside of your current industry? What are you known for? And how do people know that? How do they discover you? You, you make videos like this, you can get on YouTube or Instagram or Twitter. You can just start talking on LinkedIn. You can go talk about a lot of soft skills, a lot about leadership, emotional leadership, or about your technical area and break it down so simply and beautifully that people know, hey, Samson is an expert at blockchain because he can explain uh, that emerging technology the easiest so that executives understand it. So for you, how are you known as a SME or subject matter expert? Which will lead you to number five, um, people. People are led things and inventories are managed. So this is super important. Had a great uh, non-mentor mentor at Fannie Mae named Rich Yamamoto. He asked me what leadership was. I told him something in my 30 year old mind. He looked at me and told me I was a moron in so many words because he said, uh, things are, people are led things in inventories are managed. And I was like, oh my goodness, Rich, that's so smart. And so again, you're gonna start over, you're probably wanna start over in a leadership uh, capacity. And in that moment, you will find out that people are led, things in inventories are managed. The reason that people are led and you knowing this is so crucial to your pivot to starting over, starting anew, if you have those people skills, you can pivot to anywhere you want to be. 
Because if you have the people skills, humans are humans, we're bipedal, we have opposable thumbs, most of us just use them to text on Instagram or on social media. But people desperately want to be led by emotionally aware and sound leaders. And when you're an emotionally aware and sound leader, when you have empathy, it doesn't matter if you're in a mortgage industry or if you're going to a startup or if you're going into education, technology, uh, if you're going into the space economy, people want to be led regardless. They want to be led with uh, empathy, transparency, and accountability. They're looking for leadership qualities. So as you're thinking, hey, here's the corporate ladder. I'm about to jump off. Remind yourself, am I building my leadership credentials, my leadership uh, qualifications? So regardless of what industry that opportunity falls in, I can lead human beings. That's the most important thing. So we're going to end it right there because we talked about starting anew. Um, we're going to get on to our other four things that we're going to talk about um, in climbing the corporate ladder, or rather at the top of the corporate ladder is entrepreneurship. Thing number two is startup life, pivoting into a startup life. It's crazy because at your regular day job, you know, your first day on your day job at a corporate entity, they tell you, hey, Here's how you set a password. When you go into startup life, you're expected to be a subject matter expert in the job that didn't exist before you walked through the door. So that's it for the moment. My name is Samson Williams. Share this video, leave a comment below, shoot me a DM. That's why I'm getting a lot of DMs about this because apparently if you're an 80s baby, if you're born in 1980, you're thinking I've got 20 years in the game, it's time to get out. And at the top of the corporate ladder when you get out is entrepreneurship. So stay tuned, peace.